Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how you can easily enable approvals in your Google Cloud Build jobs and pipelines. If you're following in the last few videos, I have shown you how you can build a Google Cloud Build pipeline so that you can build and store Docker images in Google Artifact Registry. And then I have shown you in the last video how you can make it more efficient by enabling the caching and how you can do it by modifying your cloud build.yaml file. Although the example I had in that video wasn't helping much to show you the difference before and after enabling the cache, but I hope I was able to at least explain and show you the required steps and the modifications that you had to do in cloud build.yaml file. Now in this video, I will show you more ways to optimize your pipeline and make it more reliable and secure which is by enabling the approvals on it. And before I show you that, I would love if you like the video, subscribe and enable the alerts, or if at least you found the video helpful and useful, just click the like button so that more people can find it easily on YouTube. Okay, so in this video, I will be talking about the following points. First of all, I will talk about what is the reason and use case why we need to have approvals enabled in our workflows and in our pipelines. This does not apply to cloud build only and specifically it's a common practice on everything that contains workflow or a process or a change. You probably need to review and take action or take a decision before having that change take effect. And then the second point is how to enable the approvals in your Google Cloud Build pipelines. And then what are the required permissions if you want to delegate the role of approving or de declining or rejecting the changes that will happen in the pipelines. There will be some specific IAM permissions I will show you so that other people than you can approve or reject the changes. And finally, I will show you what will it feel when approvals are enabled and when there is a change to the code, I will simulate one change and I will show you the pipeline and then how it will wait for the approval and I will show you the process for approving this. So first of all, what is the reason and what is the need for approvals? Again, not only in Google Cloud Build, but since I'm talking about Google Cloud Build, I will only cover that specific scenario. So the main point here is that you want to ensure that any change that will be applied to your environment and to your container images is obviously reviewed and checked and then approved by you or someone else before that change is rolled. Maybe somebody has put some sort of bad code or bad changes in the code and then he tried or they tried to build a container image of that without a way for you to hold that process to review the changes whatever changes that have been introduced into that code malicious or unwanted or whatever will be built and then will be saved into the uh, artifact registry and then these images will be used for your production applications and systems this is something you don't want but again the main point is that somebody has to manually review and approve the changes and then approve the build so that the job can proceed and complete the required steps. Now, how to enable the approvals in Google Cloud Build, whether you're creating a new pipeline or if you have an existing pipeline, well, this is something very simple and straightforward. And again, this is where I left off in my previous videos. I have created this pipeline. Let me go to triggers. And I have done some runs on this pipeline to uh, show you the main build process and then how the build process will happen if you introduce caching. Now, let me enhance this by adding the approvals and then I will show you what happens when you want to do it from scratch. So simply go inside the pipeline settings or the trigger settings. There will be something under the advanced probably, which you will see uh, the approval option here. It's only a checkbox. You just check this and then you will click save. This is how you modify an existing pipeline. Now it's basically the same process if you create a new pipeline from scratch. So you go to create a trigger, you fill whatever properties you want to go here and then you click the, again, check the approvals button and this trigger will have approvals enabled on it as soon as you save it. Now, once you save and once somebody 
obviously after you enable the approvals once somebody pushes a change and if you want to delegate this to someone else from your team to review and uh, approve the changes then you need to give them some specific IAM permissions which is highlighted for us in this little note here so it says that any user with a cloud build approver role for this project can approve a build in the project specifically now you can do this on the organization level so you create a role and you add a user and you grant this role uh, on the organization level or on the folder level and anything under these whether organization or folder will inherit the top level permission giving that user the option or the ability to approve builds from multiple projects so simply you can go to IAM and admin then go to IAM and you add the user that you want to grant the uh, role to so you, you click grant access you type the email address of the user obviously that has to be a Google enabled ID Google workspace cloud identity you know one of these or Gmail also Gmail is not a good idea to uh, include while managing your GCP organization and then in the roles you just go to the roles find cloud build which is a little bit at the bottom I think or it's yeah it's in the C letter and you'll find the role which is cloud build approver which is the first one that's it once you grant this to the user they can then approve the uh, job now just for the sake of demonstration I'm going to add my Gmail here now since I have configured the approval on my current trigger and I have granted the required permissions for the people to approve the builds let me show you what will happen whenever you introduce any change or when there is a build that needs to be approved so going to cloud build and then triggers I need to go to my repo so that I can create an event which will trigger the pipeline <laughs> So I will go to main.py which is my very basic application of a few lines. <laughs> I think I will change this into the next videos to be something larger and something more complex just to make sense. <laughs> so yeah, um, in the last time I changed the port, let me set back the port to 8080 which is the default value. And that's it, I will click uh, commit changes. Now going back to cloud build the trigger has been uh, or the yeah the job has been triggered or the trigger is now running whatever <laughs> if I go to history you will see this yellow mark on this job it requires the approval so when I go inside it it says or uh, everything is being held right it's awaiting approval and if you look at the top here you will find the approval options whether you approve or reject or you can just cancel this and basically these are the options that you have so simply if I click approve it will uh, prompt me to type a message why I approved this so for example reviewed and uh, yeah, well, just whatever message that uh, you want to include with this action and if there is any URL or anything that you want to include some sort of uh, change request reference or anything you can add it here so that this link will take you to your own internal ticketing system and uh, view the required details about this if you have that process but then I think it's it just to show you the options that you have right so I'm going to click approve and then this job will start running now and it will take whatever time it requires to be completed which based on the last time I ran it it was more of 30 seconds 40 seconds something like this now this is the case of, of uh, approving the build right so if I go back to the uh, main page you see it's now running let me introduce another change so that I can show you what happens when you reject the change so let's say that I have done something bad and I have broken the uh, <laughs> the the application right so uh, I intentionally added this single quote here to break the application and I click commit changes so now the job will be triggered again again it finished very fast so uh, let it appear by itself <laughs> so again now it's waiting for approval again and let's assume that somebody went and viewed the changes and viewed the code in here and, and they noticed this uh, issue with the code and looking at the type 
of this issue it will be critical error it will prevent the whole application from running it's not just like a bug or anything it's going to prevent the whole application from running right so this cannot be built into an image it cannot be used because it's going to be broken so they simply can come in here and say reject and they can add the message which is and uh, let's say reviewed and um, code is broken for example that's again a message to uh, justify why they have rejected this build and then the status will change to be rejected and you see this uh, little thing here now if you click retry and uh, basically when this guy submit or fix the issue that they did here they can come in here or someone else can come in here and click retry and then they can submit it again for approval then someone else can come and review but then they might see the same error so they will come in here and they reject it and that's it now i have mentioned that you can also notify the approvers the people who will come and approve or uh, reject the build by email or by any means uh, possible right this can be found in here let me take you back to the triggers and let me just uh, make that message appear again so if you click here on learn more on this little notification about the i am permission it will take you to a help page where one of the items here called receive notifications for builds waiting for approval if you go there you see that you can have these options for notifications you can do bigquery you can do http and uh, you can do it on slack obviously slack is very common and people would be happy to receive notifications on slack smtp for email and you can create your own notifier and basically the, these are uh, uh, instructions and guides right so you can click on slack for example it will take you to the guide where you can uh, configure the notifications for slack channel and uh, have the notifications sent there so this is how you enable approvals in your cloud build pipelines. I hope this was useful and it did help you learn something new today. I have a few more topics that I want to talk about in cloud build, including enabling and using binary authorization to build and maintain your Docker images repository. This is something very interesting in terms of securing your supply chain as well. And hopefully very soon I'll be able to post some more content specifically about this topic. Now, if you want to be notified when I do that, then maybe you want to hit the subscribe button and enable the alerts. And also, again, if you find this uh, video useful, maybe you want to click the like button so that more people can easily find it on YouTube. And also, if you happen to be a Google Workspace admin or if you're considering to be one or your organization is looking to adapt Google Workspace and you're looking for some resources about it, then I have a full detailed course about Google Workspace management um, um, and uh, administration uh, on Udemy. It covers a lot of topics such as users, groups, management, device management, Google Vault and e-discovery, data and security and DLP in general, and many other topics actually uh, that you'll find very useful and handy whenever you want to work and manage Google Workspace. You can get it from the link in the video description at a discounted price. Once you do that, you will get it for lifetime and get any content update or change that I do on it in the future for free and automatically as well. So that's it. Until my next video, stay safe and have a great time wherever you are.